بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له شاد روانی ہے آپ کہہ دیجیے اللہ واحد ہے ایک ہے اللہ بے نیاز ہے نہ وہ کسی کا باپ ہے اور نہ وہ کسی کا بیٹا ہے اور نہ ہی کوئی اس کی برابری کر سکتا ہے صدق اللہ In today's lecture, we'll discuss how the various body cav cavities Almighty Allah forms during our development in our womb's mother. Abdominal cavity in which the viscera of the abdomen is suspended. When you open up the abdomen, you enter into a cavity, and that cavity is the abdominal cavity, also called the peritoneal cavity. In this cavity, the gastrointestinal tract is suspended. Some parts of the gastrointestinal tract they are fixed and some are moved as the small intestine, the appendix, and a part of the large intestine known as the uh, middle colon or the sigmoid colon. They are movable. While some parts they are not movable, like the duodenum, like the ascending colon, and like the descending colon and rectum, etc. So how this cavity is designed while we are developing inside the uterus of our mother, the plan of the lecture is to define all these things. Similarly, these cavities are developed in the chest and in the chest there are two cavities known as a cavity for the heart that is the pericardial cavity and the cavity for the lungs that is known as the pleural cavity and the partition between the pericardial and the pleural cavity that is the diaphragm we'll also discuss how that partition is formed between the cavities of the chest and the cavity of the abdomen. Now, very early in the week three of intrauterine life, the trilaminar embryonic disc becomes, uh, the bilaminar embryonic disc becomes the trilaminar. Having the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. So in the third week of development, there are three germinal layers. The background knowledge, you know, the ectoderm on the outer side, the endoderm on the inner side, and uh, mesoderm in the middle. By week four, the intrabryonic mesoderm divides into paraxial mesoderm, which is near the midline, intermediate mesoderm, which is next laterally, and the lateral mesoderm or the lateral plate mesoderm far lateral. So at the lateral edges of the disc, you find the lateral mesoderm. We call it lateral mesoderm or lateral plate mesoderm. Okay.
Now in the later mesoderm, there appears small cavities or intercellular spaces. They, after union, they form a biggest size space over here. And that space is the intra-embryonic siloam. I repeat, the latter mesoderm splits in two layers by formation and union of the small cavities in the lateral mesoderm. And this is the intraembryonic siloam. It has got an outer wall. I mean, this is the siloam. If you three dimensionally, you see over here. If that is the siloam, and this is the siloam that is running all around over here. This outer side layer of the lateral mesoderm, which is adjacent to the ectoderm, that we call as the somatic mesoderm. This and that which is near the endoderm, we call it as splenchnic mesoderm. This one. So this space lies between the uh, somatic mesoderm and the splenchnic mesoderm. This splenchnic mesoderm you see over here is covering the endoderm. And endoderm is the origin of the gastrointestinal tract. Meaning thereby, this planktonic mesoderm will form an outer coat of the endoderm-derived organs. So if endoderm forms the small intestine and the large intestine, the covering of that would be formed in the, in the form of muscles. Smooth muscles running transverse direction and in the longitudinal direction, inner, inner circular and outer longitudinal muscles. They are formed by this splenchnic mesoderm. And similarly, abdominal wall on the outside is formed by the ectoderm. And on the inner side, it is lined by a mesoderm known as the somatic mesoderm. So in between the two, which is forming the muscles of the abdominal wall and the outer layer of the peritone. So this is what, this is what, that is the intraembryonic slow or the future peritoneal in the region of the abdominal peritone cavity, in the region of the chest, that is the pleural cavity, and in the region of the developing heart, that would be the uh, pericardial cavity. Okay, so I repeat with the appearance and the coalescence of intercellular clefts in the lateral mesoderm, it splits into somatic and splenchnic layers all around the embryonic disc. Then the space between the two is the intraembryonic slow, which is future peritoneal cavity in the abdomen, pleural cavity and pericardial cavity in the, in the thorax. Again, now this is the future, and that that is say the embryonic disc, this one of ectoderm, mesoderm, and this end, and that is the somatic mesoderm, and this is the visceral or the splenchnic mesoderm. And when folding is done, see this is folding, the lateral edges of the embryonic disc they are coming forward and uniting in the midline to complete the abdominal wall. You see over here? So what you see over here is the uh, yolk set incorporated into the body as the, 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 the gut and the intrabronic serum, this one on either side with folding is formed a cavity inside and that is the intrabronic serum or the future a uh, peritoneal cavity, this one. Okay. 
On the inner side, it is lined by the uh, uh, visceral mesoderm or the subplanketic mesoderm, and the outer side, which is just below the skin, that is the uh, somatic mesoderm. And the cavity in between that is the that is the intravenous slough or the future peritoneal cavity. Now here you see again the the disc. This one, this cavity, this one which is forming all around. It has got two lateral limbs and one cranial end where these are forming a blind end. Okay, so this is the region where the pericardial cavity would pop. We'll see how it is how it is done. These are the two limbs, and this is the cranial end of the cavity, which is the future pericardial. This is another view. Uh, you are looking from the side and from the top. Below is the yolk sac. And here the, uh, on the upper side, there was the, the, the amniotic wall or the amniotic cavity, which has been removed. And the lateral edges of the uh, um, uh, of the embryonic disc of the embryonic disc formed by the uh, lateral mesoderm that splits into two layers. The upper layer, which is just below the uh, peritoneal, uh, below the um, uh, amniotic cavity, and between the amniotic cavity and it is the ectoderm. And that is the uh, somatic layer. And here, which is just adjacent to the uh, yolk sac, that is the visceral layer or this planking. And in between, what you see is the intraembryonic cerebrum or the peritoneal layer. And you see over here that these are the, uh, this is the, uh, one limb, and this is the second limb, and that is the uh, cranial most blind end. And here it is made another view, uh, highly diagrammatic. These are the two limbs, one, Two and the cranial um, cranial blind end of this cavity. This one, it is here. And these are the openings on the lateral side. On the outer side lies the what we call the extra embryonic seal that communicates on the outer side. And this is highly diagrammatic before the folding. Okay. So each lip communicates the extra embryonic silom, this one, on the outside, uh, to the extra embryonic silom for herniation of the mid gut loop. Uh, last time we discussed into the umbilical cord, uh, into the umbilical cord, which closes as the as the intestines return to the abdominal cavity during the death. Now, cranio collar folding and the lateral folding. That causes changes in the uh, intraembryonic cell. The lateral folding, by which the lateral edges of the embryonic disc, they come forward and meet together in the midline, forming the anterolateral abdominal wall, that would enclose the uh, abdominal cavity or the peritoneal cavity. And the cranial folding, that will bring the pericardial cavity anteriorly or ventrally, just below the developing uh, gut, just in front of the developing gut, and would constitute the pericardial cavity. And the communication of this cavity with the general cavity, 
that would form the pericardio peritoneal canals in which the uh, in which the the cavity of the uh, lungs the cavity for the lungs the pleural cavity would develop Same, the lateral folding of the disc carries the limbs of the intramuronic silom ventrally and forms the main peritoneal cavity. The gut in it is suspended from the dorsal dominant wall by the dorsal mesent. This one. Okay. To summarize, one, by coalescing or the union of the small intercellular spaces in the lateral mesoderm, a horseshoe shaped or the U-shaped cavity is formed, known as the intramuralis. Along the cranial and lateral, edge of, lateral edges of the slipper-shaped embryonic disc. The bend of the U, which is lying cranially, that would form the future pericardial cavity. The limbs lie laterally and they open into the extramuronic slow laterally at the middle of the disc. The outer wall. So the cavity is the somatic mesoderm, the inner wall is the splenic or the visceral. The somatic mesoderm lies the ectoderm and the visceral mesoderm covers the end. The folding of the embryo brings changes in the seed. The lateral folding unites the lateral edges of the disc ventrally, forming abdominal thoracic wall and pleural peritoneal cavity. Simple. And the cranial folding brings the bend of the U ventrally anterior to the thoracic wall, pericardial cavity, and cranial most end of the disc, septum transversum, thus wedged between it and the yolk cell. That would form the diaphragm. The caudal folding forms the abdominal wall below the thorax. So, in nutshell, the splitting of the lateral mesoderm that forms a U-shaped cavity along the edges of the embryonic disc. The limbs they would form after folding, after lateral fold, they would form the abdominal cavity known as the peritoneal cavity and the cranial folding that would bring the cranial most end of the embryonic disc forward and anteriorly and that would form the pericardium. And the most of most cranial edge of the embryonic disc that is called the septum transversum. So that comes wedged between the pericardial cavity and the cavity of the uh, uh, abdomen known as the peritoneal cavity, and that would form the, 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 the uh, diaphragm. So I will go forward now. The partitioning of the intramuronic serum hoiticus, that is the division of the cavity into cavity of the abdomen into the cavity of the thorax or the cavity of the uh, uh, heart, pericardial cavity, and the pleural cavity. The intramuronic slow divides into pericardial, pleural, and peritoneal cavities by partitioning membranes. And these partitioning membranes are the septum transversa, the pleuroperitoneal membrane and the pleuroperitoneal membranes. Now this is highly diagrammatic. 
longitudinal section of the embryonic disc. That is the disc. On the top is the amniotic cavity. And below is the yolk cell. And this is the disc. This is the caudal portion of the disc where the ectoderm and the endoderm meet without mesoderm, forming the cloacal membrane. And here anteriorly or cranially forming the oropharyngeal membrane or the buccopharyngeal membrane. And just cranial to that is the area of the heart or cardiogenic area. Uh, just above is developing the U-shaped, uh, de 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 developing the uh, blind end of the uh, intramembranic serum, which is the future pericardial cavity, just we, we discussed. And this is what we call the septum plasmus, this one. So what is septum plasmus? Is the thick bar of mesoderm at the cranial most of, uh, end of the embryonic disc. What is septum transversal? This is the thick bar of mesoderm at the cranial most end of the embryonic disc. The cranial folding <coughs> the cranial folding brings that septum transversum ventrally to be wedged between the cardiogenic area and the developing gut or the yolk sac. So cranial folding carries the septum transversum ventrally and caudally until it is wedged between the cardiogenic region and the neck of the yolk sac. Therefore, it will make a transverse partition in the intramuralic slum, thereby dividing it into a pericardial cavity cranially and peritoneal cavity caudally. So when the septum transversum is wedged between the cardiogenic area and the neck of the yolk sac, it divides this cavity into two portions. A caudal portion, that is the cavity of the abdomen, known as the peritoneal cavity, and this cavity cranially as a whole, which would form the pleural cavity as well as the pericardial cavity, initially known as the pericardial cavity. So two, cavity are, two uh, cavities are formed in the intramuralic siloam, one cranially the pericardial cavity and one caudally the uh, peritoneal cavity. What you see over here, this complete this partition is not complete in the beginning. The two cavities communicate by pericardio peritoneal canals on either side. You see over here, this is the lateral abdominal wall. And these two cavities communicate by pericardio peritoneal canals, one on this side, the other on the other side. In fact, the cavity cranial to the septum transversum is single and as a whole is called primitive pericardial cavity, as we just saw. This hole is the primitive pericardial cavity, which will divide into two, the pleural cavity and the pericardial cavity, later on by partition. See over here.
It divides into a definitive pericardial cavity and two pleural cavities by pleuropericardial folds. Well, from the lateral wall of the chest, grow inwards two folds known as the pleuropericardial folds. They are made of somatic mesoderm, grow from the lateral body wall in the coronal plane. You see over here. So the pleural cavities extend into the body wall, splenic somatic mesoderm into an inner and outer layer. The inner layer is the pleurocardial membrane. The outer layer is the thoracic wall. See over here? The somatic mesoderm divides into two. One forms the lateral thoracic wall. The other goes inside in the form, uh, forming a, uh, a septum known as the pleuropericardial membrane. The pleuropericardial membrane, therefore, divides the primitive pericardial cavity into a ventral definitive pericardial cavity and two dorsal pleural cavities. The pleuropericardial membrane becomes fibrous pericardium, forming the outer wall of the pericardial cavity. The inner wall of the cavity is the epicard with autonomic nerve supply. And these two walls surround the uh, serous pericardium, or the cavity between the two walls of the, uh, uh, of the, of the pericardium. And they are continuous at the root of the heart. <coughs> The pleural cavities, they lie dorsal to the pericardial cavity. That was the cavity over here. Pleural cavities, they lie dorsal to it. They communicate with the cavity caudal to the septum transversum, peritoneal cavity, through pleuroperitoneal canals. This one. These canals get closed by a pair of transverse folds of somatic pleural mesoderm called the pleuroperitoneal membranes. Growing from the dorsal lateral body wall in. Thus, pleural cavities separate from the peritoneal cavities. So, pleuroperitoneal membranes separate the pleural cavities from the peritoneal cavity. Diaphragm. Develops in close association with body cavities. Septum transversal pleuroperitoneal membranes and mesoderm of the body wall. They make a structure known as the diaphragm. So three structures are forming the diaphragm. One, the septum transversum, other pleuroperitoneal membranes, and thirdly, the body wall. This is the body wall. This is the septum transversum, and these are the pleuroperitoneal membranes. 
septum transversum makes center tendon of the diaphragm. And the pleuroperitoneal membranes, they make the main bulk of the diaphragm. The body wall makes the outer rim of the diaphragm. Mesoderm associated with esophagus that forms the crura of the diaphragm. So the septum transversum would make the center tendon of the diaphragm. And the pleuroperitoneal membranes, they make the bulk of the diaphragm. And the body wall makes the outer rim of the diaphragm. Mesoderm associated with esophagus, that would form the crura of the diaphragm. In the beginning, the septum transversum lies opposite the cervical somites, C3, C4, C5, B4. Myoblasts of these somites penetrate pleuroperitoneal membranes to make muscle mass. The nerve originating from C3, C4 is the phrenic nerve that supplies the muscle. The phrenic nerve take their course through pleuropericardial force to supply the diaphragm. Descent of the septum shifts the diaphragm and the phrenic nerve down. Although the septum transversum lies opposite the cervical segments during fourth week, but by sixth week, the developing diaphragm is at the level of the phrenic nerve. Repositioning of the diaphragm is caused by rapid growth of the dorsal part of the embryo, that is the vertebral column, as compared to the uh, ventral part. By the beginning of the third month, some of the dorsal bands of the diaphragm originate at the level of the first lumbar vertebra. A few of the congenital abnormalities, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, because of absence of pleuroperitoneal membrane. It does not develop the contents of the abdomen, they would go into the thorax. And this condition is known as the congenital diaphragm. Esophageal hiatus hernia, if the esophageal hiatus, hiatus or opening is large enough, the contents of the abdomen may go into the chest. This condition is known as the esophageal hiatal hernia. So we have reached at the end of the study. And by now, if you study this lecture, open the book, concentrate, you can answer these questions. You can describe the formation of the intraabdronic cilia by the splitting and the, uh, by the splitting of the lateral edges of the intraabdronic mesoderm, known as the lateral mesoderm, into a U-shaped cavity known as the intraabdronic cilium. The next question, define, you can term the pleuroperitoneal folds, the septum transversa. You can describe the formation of the diaphragm and name its congenital abnormalities. So we have reached at the end of the lecture. I hope many of you, when you will open the lecture, study it properly, and then open the book as well. You will have some knowledge of the development of the body qualities and the diaphragm. Thank you very much.